Hello, what we're going to be uh, talking about today is the economic impact analysis of the uh, Ports Future uh, project. This was a, the, one might say the economic component of uh, a much larger project. And uh, the authors here are uh, Vlad Pascal, who's going to be talking to you in just a second, myself, Roy Boyd, and Ani Ruhill. And uh, we're all associated with the Voinovich uh, School of Leadership and Public Affairs here at Ohio University. So um, what, uh, how this analysis will proceed is, first of all, I'm going to go through some of the basic inter introductory remarks. And then we're going to get into the details of the actual modeling scheme, which is uh, something called implant. And um, Vlad will fill you in on the details of that. And so we, there was a series of uh, public meetings in which the, com the community was invited to participate and uh, they uh, gave their input into the analysis and then future use scenarios were developed uh, really in conjunction uh, as a combination of uh, community members and the uh, visioning teams and they were voted on by the public at large and then uh, that's what we decided to uh, discuss in this particular uh, economic analysis. Now, um, the purpose of these estimates, we're going to be using uh, some software to look at various plans and how they relate to uh, jobs in the area, because this, of course, is a uh, uh, fairly economically uh, depressed region. Uh, jobs are of uh, um, uh, of a lot of importance here, as they are everywhere, and labor income and value added. Now, value added, um, uh, we'll be talking about a little bit later, but that is going to be something that includes labor income as a uh, subset. And ultimately, what we're trying to do is to provide the public with a very meaningful uh, basis for expressing preferences when we compare a number of scenarios, and we're going to be listing those scenarios. Okay. Now, here are the, the basic scenarios that we have. Um, and these are ranked as the community ranked them. So that's not necessarily the ranking we're going to have when we talk about jobs or value added or labor. But this is the ones that, uh, uh, through voting preferences, the community ranked. and so. These are the ones that we're going to look at. And uh, the first one is to use this site uh, as a nuclear power plant, okay, to provide power for, for this particular region. Uh, next, and a variation of this, okay, is to uh, provide what we call green energy production. In other words, to be using new technologies uh, and uh, uh, provide energy. Uh, and this energy can come in various forms, electricity being one of them, uh, to service this uh, region. Okay. Another idea would be to have an industrial park. The industrial park would uh, produce a number of goods, and these would be for the benefit of the community and definitely for the benefit of the larger area and definitely the benefit of the community as far as jobs uh, and things like that go. National research and development, in other words, a, a national laboratory. This is one of the uh, things that was uh, thought of. Warehousing distribution and transportation hub. Now this would be something uh, perhaps uh, similar to uh, uh, in Columbus, so you have the Rickenbacker facility, something where um, this area would act as a hub where transportation 
will come together, whether that be air, uh, road, rail transportation. And uh, you're not that far actually from the river, so you might be able to use some water transportation as well. And uh, this would be a hub uh, where things could be stored and transported. One of the nice things about Ohio is that this region is within perhaps within 400 miles, you get into about 80 percent of the population of the country. And so this was thought to be uh, an interesting use. Training and education. Um, this is always something that uh, people think about when they think about jobs and uh, trying to get the skill level of the community um, to raise that into the types of uh, jobs that might be higher paying. And so that was another possible use. Metal recovery. This was uh, uh, looking at the fact that in that diffusion plant itself, as well as other areas, you uh, 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 adjacent areas, you have quite a bit of uh, raw metals and you could try to recover those uh, and use those uh, as recycled metals and turn a profit on the whole thing. And then a multi-use Southern Ohio Education Center, this would be combining some of the ones up above and as would the green belt, the last one that we talked about. Okay, so uh, now what we're going to do is talk about calculating then the impact estimates. And what I'm going to be going over is a uh, perhaps a short and dirty version, but a much more intuitive version. And then Vlad will get down into uh, the details. And uh, so uh, uh, let me start out here. There are several impacts. The first impact that you have when you have any new facility that is generated is which is uh, something called a direct impact. And a direct impact is when you have a new business itself. The new business opens up. This is a direct impact. You have people employed. Uh, capital is used. So um, uh, jobs are generated um, and resources are generated, some of which actually goes to the government in the form of taxes. So these are all what one would call the direct impact. And that's what most people are familiar with when they think of a new facility going up is the direct impact of that facility itself. However, um, the economy is very much interrelated. There are a lot of linkages within an economy and to say that the direct impact will exist as some sort of an isolated impact is incorrect, okay? Because we have additional impacts, okay? You have um, First of all, when you get that, that first, well, when you get that new business, the uh, goods and services um, from other businesses uh, will be impacted, okay? For example, if you were to have, uh, let's say, something that uh, produced energy, then obviously uh, you were going to uh, need some raw materials from other industries, and you're going to be providing uh, energy uh, to, uh, uh, to other businesses. So there's the, both the inputs and the outputs of this facility are going to impact other businesses and they're going to have uh, a positive impact, okay? Dep depending, of course, on how strongly these linkages exist within the economy. And we find that in the manufacturing sector, these linkages could be fairly high. If you've got something that is manufacturing a product, it's going to be using inputs from other manufacturing plants and services, and that its outputs are going to be affecting um, other manufacturing. So you have uh, other businesses, and uh, what you also find is that um, there is going to be increased household spending. When, once you have jobs, once you have new jobs available, and actually uh, to some extent capital available in the area, but definitely jobs and new income in that area, then the people that receive that are going to be using that money, spending it on other items that in turn are going to influence uh, the uh, economy at large and in particular uh, going to increase the ability of other, um, other folks uh, to produce goods and services. Okay. Um, and that 
combined will give us a total economic activity, which are going to be looking at jobs, wages, and uh, one thing that I mentioned before, uh, you're going to have an increase in tax revenue because all of these uh, are going to be taxed both at the, uh, well, at the local, state, and federal level, and to some extent you're going to have that, uh, some of that stuff go to the federal government. Okay. Now, um, I'll just give you a quick background on here on what we use, we use something called Implan. And this is a self-contained modeling package and that includes all the, the, the needed data. It's done yearly and it's developed by the MIG systems. Um, Implan is a very standard sort of model. It's been used in a lot of uh, analyses like this. Here at the Voinovich Center, we have uh, Implan data for uh, the state of Ohio. And we also have, and we have it county by county within Ohio. We also have a national database here at Voinovich. For this particular uh, analysis, uh, we could use a combination of those sorts of things. Sometimes we would use county by county data, uh, individual counties. We could also use regional data and statewide data. So this gave us a lot of flexibility to look at both the local and the statewide effects. We could also look at national effects, but we concentrated on the statewide effects. And uh, so now I'm going to do, uh, to get in more into the detail of Implan, I'm going to turn the um, presentation over to uh, Vlad Pascal. As Roy just mentioned, we used Implan. Implan is an economic modeling system, and we use it to uh, quantify some of these impacts. Uh, it's a, it's a well-known package, and as you can see, Implan is extensively been used by many different agencies, uh, by government, academic institutions, private and public companies, and it uses the data from many of the publicly available data sources, and you can see the example, it's a Bureau of Labor Statistics, Bureau of Economic Analysis, Census Bureau, Department of Agriculture. Again, Implan is a um, very well-known modeling system used a lot using the, some of these publicly available data sets. So in a sense, it, when we model this impacts, what it allows us to do is to create a snapshot of the economy, creating a really true picture of the local economy, and then we can quantify these impacts, run them from the model, and estimate the economic impacts. So what are some of the components of the implant model? Well, as you will see it in a minute, one of them is a labor income. And essentially, it's a wages, salaries, and any payments received by self-employed individuals. But it also includes what we call is value added. And value added, you can think of it as an um, economic contribution of the particular industry or a business. And it typically includes labor income, so it includes wages and salaries. And it also includes profits, any payments, uh, and indirect business taxes. So those are three major categories that we'll use when we talk about economic impact analysis. Conceptually, we divided, when we model those impacts, we divided them in two big categories. Constru operational impacts, or impacts when all, all these individual nine scenarios will be fully operational, when they will be fully uh, completed, and so-called construction impacts, because some of them will take it will need time to build, to construct, so uh, conceptually it makes sense to divide those two activities into these two categories. Uh, one important thing is when the public, when we presented those results to the public, we only use operational impacts, okay? So the, all the voting was done using only the operational impacts. As Roy mentioned, there are nine different scenarios. And you, they're really diverse, they're very different from each other. They include different components and different options. So the first thing what we had to do is to translate those impacts into sort of numbers. Because you can't just put the nuclear impact and try to run it. You need to have some numbers for that. And our job as analysts were to convert these impacts into sets of numbers. So what we've done is we conducted an extensive research trying to quantify those scenarios. So for example, we look at the data from the Department of Energy, we look at the data from Census Bureau, we look at the examples that were, that were done by other research institutions, did some literature review looking at the examples in different trade publications, and actually look at some examples from actual companies that implemented these scenarios. Once we quantified each of the scenarios, we run from 
we run those scenarios through implant, we estimated number of jobs, we estimated income, we estimated taxes, put this together and present it to the public. One important thing to mention is that impact represent a conservative estimate because we don't want to be over optimistic so we have to be as analysts very cautious and as you will see our impacts present a lower estimate of, diff of this impact results. And again they exclude impacts of a construction. Operational impacts do not include constructional impacts. So let's, let's take a look at some of these results so here are some of the results of those economic impact estimates. Let's look at the, each of the scenario individually. Let's start with education center. As you can see, the picture on the right tells you what this particular component includes. So for, in this particular case, education scenario will include a little bit of the industry. There's a light industry. There is a little bit of the research and development. Uh, some, there's educational component. But there is also uh, stuff related to education and nonprofit offices, things related to the museum, earthworks, and the green spaces. So they are very diverse as you can see that. And the table below shows some of the economic impacts associated with that particular scenario. In this case we estimate that the direct impact on this educational center will be 275 jobs, over 10 million dollars in labor income. Remember labor income is wages and uh, salaries essentially. And in terms of value added it's going to be over 13 million dollars. Again, this is direct impact. But when we consider additional impacts, there was indirect impacts due to increased household spending, due to increased purchase of goods and services in the area, the impact is going to be much larger. And you see that direct, when we combine direct and induced effect, the true economic activity is much larger. Let's look at the total effects. So for example, in terms of employment, the true economic impact will be over 360 jobs, about $300.3 million in uh, labor income in over, it's almost $18.5 million in value added. Again, as you see, the economic impacts goes beyond the uh, just direct effects. We should consider um, those additional impacts. Greenbelt is another scenario in our, that was uh, selected by the community. Again, it's very diverse. It includes very different uh, subcomponents. One of them is a heavy industry cleaning. There is an em emphasis on the uh, green uh, research and development in the green energy. Uh, but other components tend to be very similar. So in, for us, it was a little easier to model it. Again, in terms of economic impacts, you see it's much larger as opposed to educational center. Again, it goes back to those linkages existing between different industries that Roy mentioned. So in terms of direct impacts, we have employment, almost 900 jobs, it's 884 different jobs, over 39 million in um, labor income and about 49 million in value added. Again, when we consider additional impacts, the economic activity is going to be much larger. So in terms of jobs, we have almost 1,200 jobs, labor income over 50 million dollars in labor income, and in value added, it's almost 68.7 million dollars in value added. Metal recovery, the emphasis of this particular scenario is on, on the recovery of the metal because there is a lot of metal at the facility which can be recovered. So in terms of uh, economic activity, the, direct, the total effect is over 1,000 jobs. Uh, the labor income is going to be over 45 million jobs and the value added over six, slightly over 60 million dollars in value added. Again, you see it varies a lot uh, between the, all these different scenarios. Mm. Nuclear power plant is the uh, next um, uh, future use scenario option. In a sense, it's a little simpler for us to modify because to model because it includes only one component, nuclear power plant. So in terms of economic impact, the total effect will be over 840 jobs. Labor income will be over $51 million and the value added over $145 million in value added. Again, it's a very different uh, scenario, but the impacts are generally somewhat larger over if, if we compare it to educational center because of the linkages of between different sectors. The warehousing component, it's a hub, it's a multimodal hub that includes uh, warehousing component and a commercial distribution and storage uh, component. Some, very similar to what Rick and Barker Airport here in Columbus, Ohio. 
So conceptually, in terms of employment, direct effect is over 500 jobs, labor income over 24, 23 point, almost $5 million, and the value at over $33 million. Again, when we consider additional impact, indirect effects and induced effects, the total economic activity comes to over 771 jobs, $33.3 million in labor income, and $46.6 million in value added. Green energy production. As the name suggests, the emphasis of this particular scenario is on the production of green energy. Okay? But it also includes different components related to health and wellness, components related to the green areas in the f for the future use, and the sort of entertainment uh, component as well. Uh, effects, impacts are also different. Notice that, for example, here a different direct effect comes over comes to 861 jobs and um, labor income almost $49.7 million and value added almost $113 million. When we consider additional impacts, it's going to be much larger. Uh, the total effect in terms of employment comes to uh, 1,400 jobs, labor income $71 million and uh, value added over almost $149 million in value added. Industrial park includes various components. You can see there is a heavy manufacturing component, there is a post-consumer recycling component, there is things related to green and renewable energy manufacturing, research and development. It's a very diverse sort of uh, component which includes many different activities. Again, effects tend to be sort of very high if we look at the total effect in terms of employment. So you can see it's almost uh, 1,275 jobs in terms of employment. 65.7 million in value added and um, 142 million dollars in value added. National Research and Development Center, emphasis here on the research and development of the different components. Again, some, when we model it, we try to look at some of the examples that uh, we have. Uh, for example, we look at some of the national labs. Um, and the, in terms of impacts, it's one of the highest. You can see that actually direct effect here is about 1,500 um, jobs in terms of employment. The labor income tends to be also very high, almost 71.76 million in labor income, and the value added is about 86.3 million dollars. Again, when we consider additional impacts, the impacts will, is going to be even bigger. Total effect comes to over 2,000 uh, jobs in terms of employment. Um, $89.7 million in value in labor income and all, almost $118.7 million, $18 million in value added. Very high numbers because, the, again, the linkages tends to be very high. There is a very labor-intensive project uh, scenario, so that's why the impacts will be much higher. Training and educational component, as the name suggests, the emphasis here on education and the training part. Uh, impacts tends to be a little lower when we compare it to some of the other, other future use scenarios. So in terms of employment, the total effect comes to 245 jobs, uh, labor income over, slightly over $5.1 million, $5 million, and the value added almost uh, $6.8 million in value, in value added. So this is just a description of the operational impacts of these nine of these scenarios. But we also look at the construction impacts because construction is an important part, part when we have to implement those scenarios. Again, we, what we had to do is to translate some of these impacts into a set of numbers. And again, it was done for different extensive research. Uh, and we essentially what we did, we first had to determine the most likely type of the building. In this case, we had to consider whether it's going to be office or warehouse or plant. And then we have to determine the size of that particular facility for each scenario. So remember that each scenario includes different components. So we have to do it for each subcomponents, for each activity in the, in the individual scenario. Again, we use the data from some of the publicly available uh, data sources, Census Bureau, Department of Energy. We look at the trade publications, some of the actual examples from the real life, trying in order to estimate and to quantify some of these impacts. One exception to that was the nuclear energy, because nuclear energy tend to be a little different from in terms of construction. When it comes to construction from any other scenarios, uh, we had to quantify it a little differently. But 
general approach was the same. Basically, we include for each of the scenarios. Again, we're talking about the construction impacts. We included the cost associated with the support infrastructure. So we look at the roads, landscaping, things like that. We also look at the utilities, site development costs. All this was included in the construction cost. And for the most scenarios, we had to assume some kind of construction period. And again, just to simplify, to keep things simple, we used a three-year construction period for, a, for each scenario. We also applied what is called local pur purchase percentage. In implant, it means that because certain uh, commodities, certain things will be purchased outside of the region, we don't know that which of them. That's why we have to rely on the implant to tell us what's the percentage what percentage of those commodities was purchased locally. And we had to apply that in order to estimate the economic impacts associated with the construction. Again, we included engineering and architectural fees. They are part of the cost. Now we can look at some of the results of the constructions. So our first example in this is a warehousing distribution and transportation hub. You see the impacts of the construction. And again, those impacts are for the four county region and the impacts are based on the estimated direct construction expenditures that occur in the four county region. One thing we have to remember that those are annual uh, impacts so they will occur for each year in which construction sort of continues so if it's a three year we can expect those uh, construction impacts to continue for three years. So if we ex look at the employment we see that the, during construction the total impact in terms of employment will be almost well, it's going to be 134 jobs, $5.8 million in labor income, and about $7.5 million in value added. National Research and Development Complex. Again, impact is going to be here a little bigger. So a total effect in terms of employment will be 226 jobs, almost $9.8 million in labor income, and $12.8 million in value added. Nuclear power plant, again, as I mentioned, it was a little different the way we had to quantify it. So impacts tend to be generally very high during the construction phase. If we look at the employment, the total effect, including direct and induced effects, is almost 3,900 jobs. Labor income is going to be very high. You see it's almost $167.8 million in value added in labor income and the value added obviously also going to be very high 220.7 million dollars in value added again tend to be very high because of the nature of that particular scenario very labor intensive takes a lot of labor to complete this particular scenario on the other hand training and education scenario here the impacts tend to be a little lower again it has to do with the type of the construction that will be at that facility will be t offices and office and the infrastructure will be a little different as opposed to for example nuclear power plant that's why impact is going to be lower so in terms of employment 32 jobs um, labor income will be 1.4 million dollars and the value added will be 1.8 million dollars multi-use scenario again in terms of infrastructure and the construction tend to be very similar to the previous scenario employment will be 40 jobs, $1.7 million in labor income, and a $2.3 million in value added. Again, it has to do with the type of the construction, types of offices, um, infrastructure, and things like that. For the green belt, we have total economic activity in terms of employment, 127 jobs. Labor income will be over $5.5 million and the value added will be $7.2 million in value added. Metal recovery. So you can see that in terms of employment, 119 jobs, labor income, 5.2 million jobs, and the value added, $5.7 million in value added. Industrial park. Total economic activity comes to about 92 jobs. Labor income slightly over $4 million. And the value added will be $5.2 million in uh, value added. Green energy production. Impacts in this particular case will be much higher. 
It's because it's a different types of construction, different types of offices, different types of buildings. Notice the total e effect in terms of employment. It's uh, over 1,900 jobs in, in employment. Uh, labor income will also be very high, uh, $83 million in wages and salaries. Okay? Value added is also going to be high. It's $109 million in value added. So the numbers will be much higher due to the nature of that particular uh, scenario. It requires more infrastructure, different types of buildings. Uh, that's why the impact is going to be larger. So here the summary of the operational effects, impacts. Again, public was presented with the operational impacts. Construction impacts were not included in the voting. So if we rank them based on the value added, you see the green energy productions tend to have one of the largest value added components. It's slightly over $140 million. It's closely followed by the nuclear power, which has also had a very high um, value added component. And the industrial park, those are the three big components in terms of value added if we rank them. The one of the lowest tends to be training and educational center. And you see it's actually both to the components, educational center and training and educational components, they on the, tend, to be the very, tend to have very low um, value added component. Again, it has to do with the nature of that particular scenario, what kind of activities included in this particular uh, scenario, and the direct connection between industries. So as you saw, the, all these nine scenarios include very wide range of activities. They are very different from each other. So economic results and economic impacts obviously vary considerably, in part due to direct inputs, the way we quantify those scenarios, and in part it has to do with the structure of the economy, those connections and linkages between different sectors. So we have to be very cautious when we're interpreting these results. Our job was to make sure we present uh, fair and unbiased results, but nevertheless we have to be very, and the public in general has to be very careful when we're interpreting these results. Uh, so what happened? When all these economic impacts results were, with, together with the description of the scenarios, were presented to the public, public opinion uh, from residents about preferred scenarios for the future was gathered, and you can see that we had over 1.6 me media impressions that was delivered from m multiple uh, channels. We reached thousands of different people. And what we found that nuclear power plant and green energy production together with industrial park uh, tend to be top three preferred options for this particular task. Again, they tend to be very different. They encompass um, a wide variety of different activities, but those three uh, tend to be in the top.